they were laughing at me. <laughs> Dr. Ella, Pastor Ella Rock. Pastor John's over there. He's our TV director tonight. He's helping us make sure that everything is always straight when we come for you. So we bless you. We thank you. The teamwork does make the dream work. And we believe that you're going to have a great dream tonight. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. A dream of being well, healthy and wise, uh, so that the, the things of your body uh, might be healed, Amen. made well, and that burden relieved from your mind. You know, when we get older, uh, all kinds of things begin to uh, try to attach themselves to our bodies, and it causes our minds to have a, a burden all day. And if you are fixated with a burden all day, uh, how much time are you going to be thinking about how good God is? That's you true. know, And so uh, these particular messages that we started uh, 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 just a little bit ago, last Wednesday night, Amen. talking about the mercies of God, uh, it is to uh, help you and I, uh, and again, especially men and women that have gotten older, or even if you have, you're have you young and you have some kind of burden in your body, or some well, disease, disease in your body that's causing a burden to your mind constantly, uh, these messages are, are well established to deliver you Definitely. if you desire to be delivered. Now, we have to wrestle with the Lord sometimes and to hold on to our blessings or get a new blessing. But is it worth it Amen. to walk away knowing that, guess what? Your body has been delivered uh, from the interloopers that came in with sin. All right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you got anything to say, dog, tonight? Just good evening to everyone. And I pray that this word truly will bless you and set you free. Because Psalm 107 20 says, God said, I sent my word to heal yes. and to deliver from all destruction. So, yes. even when things have happened, to your body. God says, I sent my word not just to heal you, but to deliver you yeah. from all destruction, anything that's happened as a result of that sickness. And that's what we're looking for, the more miracle, yes. miraculous power of God to be um, moved upon in your life and that God will truly bless you like you've never been blessed before because we believe that this is the time that's right. for you to receive your miracle in Jesus' name. That's right. You and I are the body of Christ. Yes, we are. All right? And all the believers all over the world, we're the body of Christ. Amen. And uh, the grace that uh, was shown to Jacob was that, and even to uh, <laughs> Daniel, uh, the Israelite without any guile, mm -hmm. uh, that angels are ascending and descending upon the body of Christ. So you and I have the, the privilege every day to receive supply for everything that we need uh, through understanding the scriptures. And the things that are revealed to us, you know they belong to you. That's right. So I would hold on to them and uh, not miss out on the opportunity to receive your healing. Now, when we're talking about healing or any other subject, uh, you'll notice that after that particular word goes forth, which the word of God is eternal. Amen. So after that particular word uh, is spoken and given out, uh, we are interpreters of God's language to everybody. So he gives us a language to speak to everyone. Amen. And he shares that through us. So when that happens, you have opened yourself up in receiving the word. You have opened yourself up or put yourself in a place where no matter what disease is going on in your body, That's right. All right, the miracle of God always, the miracle power of God, yes. always overcome natural circumstances. Mm -hmm. Always. Amen. Okay. So the idea, the, the faith, the, the pressure that we put on the Word of God is to bring us to this place where that's complete in our life. Not that we just hear about healings, but that we receive those healings. Not that we just hear, yes. you know, about somebody got delivered, but that, guess what? Deliverance takes place in us because that Word is eternal. And as Jesus told Satan himself, right, man shall not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. That is a most powerful statement, a most powerful place of faith to start your walk in receiving any wellness that you need in your body. All right? Amen. Any place, okay? So we're going to begin tonight on uh, John chapter 5. Uh, this is where we started this whole uh, series of, of believing God for the miraculous to take place. You know, yesterday uh, at our service, a young man was there. Uh, 20 years ago, his parents were believing 19. for a child. He's 19. Oh, 20 he years ago, okay. uh, his parents were believing for a child. Uh, previous years before that, they'd had miscarriages, you know, and, and they came and one day and I prayed for him and they had a little boy and he grew. Uh, and this is the power of God. He, he was born 
didn't have, he had his little nubbies, but he didn't have his full fingers, his ears and all those things. And God grew him outside of the womb. See, that's, that's powerful. God grew him outside of the womb. The mother had him and they had him in an incubator and he grew all of his little organs outside of the womb of the mother. See, God is, is most powerful. That young man was there yesterday with his mother. He's now 19 years old. 19 years old. I've seen some before him. The miraculous power of God bring children into the world. I've seen children after that young man come into the world, okay? And so what we're saying to you is not something that we just heard, but this is life to us. These are the things that we have seen as, as the writers of the gospel say. You know, these are things that we heard and we saw. These things will manifest before us, and we are telling you so that your faith might be in the Lord God, all right? Mm -hmm. And so let's get your healing tonight, Amen. all right? Or your neighbors or your boss, you know, let's get your healing tonight uh, so that now you can say it's not just something I heard anymore, but now it is manifest in the life around me, to me, Amen. in my family, business, whatever, okay? Now, in John chapter 5, we begin verse 1 through 15, and uh, last week, uh, you know this is the feast time, and uh, all these particular feasts coming all the way up until almost the last day of September. Uh, and when we get to the Feast of Tabernacles, you know that's a big high time, and all of you should be well saturated. You should be walking around in your white robe by then, all right? <laughs> but uh, and, and clean and pure and, and holy before the Lord God and a blessing, all right? Uh, but up until from this time up until then, uh, we're asking everybody to believe for supernatural miracles to take place in our yes, lives Lord, for you your family and whatever because this is a time where God would bring forth you know alleviate judgment bring forth mercy and and show yes. great kindness to his people you know and they had like seven or eight months before there's another feast again so this is a great time for completion of grace the great Amen. grace that God give you okay so in this particular story now you should be there by now uh, John chapter 5 verse 1 through 15 we see that there was an angel that would come down. Jesus comes to this pool uh, where all of these sick people are, the halt, the blind, the maimed, and these are listed because these are the types of illnesses that keep people lingering longer than other illnesses. So these were things that were mentioned by the writer uh, to let you and I get a picture of uh, how devastating this particular place was with sickness. Even though it was near the temple, but it was loaded up with sick people. You know, they've been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes in. There's this man there. Uh, he's there. All the people are there. They've been there for ages, waiting mm -hmm. on an angel to come. Stir the water. Stir the water mm -hmm. You know, stir the water. And the angel would come down and stir the water, uh, which pre which represented uh, medicine to to give to the, per the first person that stepped in. When that angel came down, uh, it produced supernatural virtue in the water. Okay, and the first person that stepped in, that person was healed of whatever disease, mm -hmm. all right? Whatever disease, you ought to say that right now, whatever. whatever, whatever, because whatever it is, God's got a remedy for it, all right? Whatever, okay? If it's got a name, he's got, he's got a remedy for it. He's got a healing for it, okay? So and so, yes, so so this, this man, Jesus confronts this young man. You know, he's been laying there for a long time, mm -hmm. and Jesus just asks him, do you want... Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to go home and enjoy your family. Do you want to go mm -hmm. back to, to life and whatever? He's just asking him questions. And the man says, he starts giving the misery of his of his case. I don't have nobody he put said, me in the water. Say it again. That's, that's, I don't have nobody put me in the water. That's, Jesus. that's probably the way he said it. I don't have nobody put me in the water. You know, he was trusting in a man to bring him to a place where one step between devastation and a cure would be fixed. There would be a bridge between the cure and the devastation that he was going through. And, and it says that Jesus, upon himself, he took on himself to be the man's doctor. Mm -hmm. He is Dr. You Jesus. know, and he told the man, he says, listen, pick up your bed. <laughs> All right, take up your bed, rise and walk, and uh, get on home. Enjoy life. Now, when he told the man to pick up his bed and walk, okay, Verse nine. Uh, Verse 9, my wife's looking at this mm -hmm. in, the, in the book here, just right along with you, okay? Mm -hmm. This is a, 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 a question that stems with a lot of people sometimes when it comes to believing God. Some people believe that as long as you're quoting the scriptures, you don't have to do anything except believe God, <laughs> all right? But in, in Jesus telling this man 
to pick up your bed and walk, just like he told the paralytic to take up your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. He was he was attempting, he was telling the person that you must attempt to help yourself. Yeah, that's right. Say we walk you, by yeah, faith. We walk by we faith. faith all right. So okay. you must attempt to help yourself. Okay? When Jairus came to Jesus for Jesus' help with his daughter, Jairus was attempting himself to bring help to his house. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can't sit on your blessed assurance and just say, you know, well, I'm fixing it, and if the Lord want to fix it, he's going to fix it. No. You have to do some things in an attempt to help yourself so that the Lord can see that, guess what? You are you are very interested in your own deliverance. Amen. Okay? Amen. Not just depending on, you know, what you've heard about him and this and that. You, are, you have to give some effort. Mm -hmm. All right? You know, do something to help yourself as the Lord is going to prepare you. Because again, duty always belongs to us, but the event belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And so if I do some of the duties that I can do, then guess what? God will fix the event, okay? And so this is what's happening with this young man. You know, the Lord tells him to take up your bed and walk, and then guess what? He didn't need a man anymore because the man of man's was there, man all right? And so <laughs> Jesus tells him to pick up his bed and walk. He goes in, and guess what? Somebody wants to know, you know, custom was if you're carrying your bed on, on, on the Sabbath, Sabbath day, it was something special about you. So he drew attention to himself and, and, and guess what? It ended up in the religious leader's hands. Who healed you? How did you walk? How, who told you to do this? You know? And he told him, Jesus told me, oh boy, what did he say that for? You know? Well, what we find and what we talked about the last couple of days is that the waters actually represent now uh, within you and I, my wife, Pastor John, any believer out there, the water actually represents the power of Mount Zion in you, mm -hmm. Emmanuel's veins flowing with living water, bringing inside of you. And we looked at that yesterday because it's most important that you understand. The angels didn't come down on the ground. They came down in the water. They stirred the water, okay? The water became the medicine. Well, you and I, because of the moving of the water, this man or anyone that stepped in was healed. Well, because of the moving of the water that's in us, you know, when we're praying, when we're believing, when we're in agreement, the spirit of unity is working, wow. and, we're, and we're just, everybody's on one accord. That river of living water inside of us is flowing to help whosoever is in that congregation Amen. or in that store or, you know, on that highway or by the byway, wherever they might be, that living water is there running now as a river to bring refreshing. And, and it's a continuation of refreshing. It's not just like you poured out something. It's a continuation of refreshing. So come and go with us to John chapter 7 real quick. Just turn a couple of pages. In your smartphone, just hit a couple of dots. Mm -hmm. All right, you'll be right there. Okay, John chapter 7. All right. We should be in verse um, 33, 35, somewhere like this. Oh, here we go. Right here, 37. 37. My wife's going to read this uh, because we're going to jump over to another chapter in a moment. Right. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Now this was again during Feast of Tabernacles. Jesus is there during the feast time in Jerusalem. John is talking about these miracles that happened in Jerusalem versus some of the other writers that were talking about the miracles that happened out in Galilee and around the area that Jesus walked and traveled in. Okay? He goes on to say this. If any man thirst. Any man. That's you. <laughs> let him come unto me and drink. Yep. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, belly. shall yes. flow rivers, rivers of living water. Amen. And this he talk about, you know, about the Holy Spirit who Spirit has come now. Angels. And, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus paid for him with his blood. And so now the Holy Spirit, again, as I said yesterday, the Holy Spirit wasn't sent, all right, as Jesus was sent. God so loved the world, he sent Jesus into the world. And this is the great salvation that you and I have because we believe that Father God sent him, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Jesus paid through his blood for the power of the Holy Spirit to live in our lives so that we may have these rivers of living water flowing out of us, okay? And that could be all over the whole world. Instead of Jesus just being here himself and in one place at one time, now we have the Holy Spirit and we have 
all these rivers all over the world. Yes, Can you imagine God. the world is getting ready for another flood? <laughs> and it's going to be the believer's flood. All right, not Noah's flood, but the believer's, the believer's flood. flood. All these rivers of living water flowing out of us all over the world. It's going to bring the greatest harvest that has ever been seen hey, since the time the that this world has been created. All right? And he says this, that out of our belly shall flow. If any man thirsts, come to him. As he spoke about in uh, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. He says, if you thirst and hunger for righteousness, you shall be filled. Shall be filled. This, is, this is the deal. You and I have now the power of the Holy Spirit living in us yes. so that we might uh, flow or overflow. Uh, where when Oh, boy, I like, I like this one. You remember in Isaiah where it talks about when the enemy comes in? Yeah. All right. And it says, like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord would lift up a standard against him. Well, it wasn't the enemy coming in like a flood. It says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. All right? <laughs> so, so we have the Spirit of the Lord overflowing or bringing in a continual pushing away of anything that's evil, like a flood. Yes. It pushes things. Regardless of what it is, it can be a house, it can be a boat, car, whatever, people, it pushes it. Guess what? You go with the force of the flood. And the Spirit of the Lord brings the force of the water out of us, the rivers of mm -hmm. living water out of us, mm -hmm. so that, guess what? Whatever is wrong in our bodies, the dis-ease, mm -hmm. it pushes it out. Whatever is wrong in our minds, you know, whatever is wrong in our finances, whatever, he's come to fix all of that. That's why this is so important to understand. It is not an age thing. That, you know, when you get older, you have to bear through this and go through this. You know, you will see that some of God's uh, favorite people were the oldest people, his choicest people, and how he used them tremendously in their old age. You know, and we see people getting, you know, get a little headache, get a little this. Oh, I can't do this. I got to have this. And no, 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 no. You need to get the Holy Spirit first. Yeah. That's what you need to be baptized in, the Holy Spirit, and then allow him to share with you these things so that you can flush those things out of your life. Those old iniquitous patterns that came, you know, flush those old migraines out of your life. Flush that stuff out with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, again, you know, you can't, you can't, if you dam up a river, only, only what comes out is what's going to be released to help downstream. Yeah. <laughs> but if you leave it undammed, then guess what? The power of that thing is always moving mm -hmm. and it is always carrying something downstream that's going to benefit the people that are waiting on it. You, yes, you guys with me? Good. And so we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit operating in us continuously, as Jesus said. Now, come on, go with us tonight. All right. Because we got some time we want to spend on this particular lesson, John chapter nine. This is still at the mm. feast time. This is still going on. Doing feast time. You, you you got something to say? I hear you say, mm. No, I was just okay. listening. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, this is still going on at the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is where Jesus has stood up and cried, if any man thirsts, let him come to me. I'll, you know, I'll give him drink. I'll fill him up. I'll fix him up, you know, mm -hmm. because in the Old Testament, and he is very careful to follow, all right, to follow suit, okay, the nature and the character of the Old Testament because he could not break it. Okay, he had to fulfill it, not break it, yes, but to fulfill it, fulfill it. All right? So it's like taking a glass that's got this much water in it and then holding it under a fountain until, guess what, it just starts overflowing. Overflow. Well, this is what he came to do. He came to take that pitcher, okay, and to turn it into a person, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what he did for you and I. So that now the God that was just a picture or, or, or a figment of their imagination in some way was now a real person living with them, Emmanuel, living with them now, okay? And so this is what you and I have. And so he's at the feast time and he knows that some of these people he will not see again. They will not see him. Just like in church, sometimes when we give our, you know, our benediction, you know, we've invited people to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and to join the ministry or be involved, whatever. Sometimes that's the last time you see them. You, just don't know. you know, you don't know. So Jesus stands up and cries and he says, you know, you know, any man thirst coming to me. And then in the, the heated argument with the Pharisees, all right, because he healed this man on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. All right. Like Jesus has some particular day to heal you. You know, he heals you every day, any day, night, day, whatever, air light, the dark night, dog light, whatever light. He heals you at any time that you call upon his name. And these people were so fixated with, you can't do anything, 
you know, on on the Sabbath day, except loose your ox and carry him <laughs> to water. But you can't loose a person, this you know. And so they were something else. And so Jesus comes out of that heated argument with them about the Sabbath day. He's Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. He comes out of that heated argument, and it shows you that he never, okay, he will never outrun an opportunity to help you. Thank you, Lord. Okay? See, you got to get away from all the stuff that everybody else trying to tell you that they'll help you. And they don't have no uh, eternity in their help, but Jesus does. Yes, okay? Is. And so in John chapter 9, uh, beginning in verse 1, uh, down through uh, verse 7, 8, we're going to look at this. We're not going to look at this whole story because that's another story, as Paul Hobbes said. <laughs> okay? But we are going to look at this first part. Uh, to help you get some understanding of, regardless of age, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what the burden is right now in your mind about what's going on in your body, or, you know, what others have said that will go on in your body. Because some people give you reports before the seasons get here. Okay? <laughs> I don't know if you guys got that or not. Okay? But some people do. They give you a report before the seasons get here. Okay? And so... What you need to know is that to alleviate all of those things and to focus on Jesus and, and allow him, regardless of what season it is, what time it is, what age it is, you know, what culture it is, doesn't matter. God is no respect of persons. All right. Thank God for that. He is no respect of person. And he will bless your life with wellness if you get into the place of intimacy with him because you thirst and you hunger after righteousness. I want his righteousness in my bones, in my flesh. I want his righteousness. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So would you read this down for us, please? And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Mm -hmm. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and uh -oh. made clay of the spittle. <laughs> and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. He came seen. Isn't that powerful? The eyes of the blind. Now, Jesus, we know from the scriptures that Jesus healed people that were blind yes. uh, from maybe certain diseases or maybe by accidents. But this is the first mention of him uh, healing one that was born blind. Okay? Mm -hmm. Born blind. That's a difference. Okay? Yes, it is. Because when you lose sight, okay, it simply means that now you've lost the joy of enjoying certain things based on that sight. But when you have been born blind, you've never seen a color. You've never seen a shape. Okay. You've never seen the size of, of adults or children or infants. That's right. You've never seen the, the shapes of different trees, the, co the color of waters. You, you've missed so much of God's creation. See, and God wants us to enjoy it all. And so this is why Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And as long as I'm the light of the world and in the world, and guess what? He gonna, he's going to do what he's supposed to do, and that is to give sight to the blind. Now, in this particular lesson here, you know, there's a lot in this lesson, okay? And this is why I'm saying we're not getting over that part where the blind man, where the man who can see now that was blind is talking to the Pharisees. Yes. We want to get into this part about this healing because the mercies of God, yes. again, are presenting themselves in the avenue of this picture here with this blind man who has never seen, okay? But... He's never seen, but he trusts the man that's talking before him. He can hear him. Mm -hmm. Didn't say he was deaf. He can hear Jesus talking with the disciples, okay? And he allows Jesus to take this clay. He didn't know what Jesus, how Jesus made it, just like you don't know how Jesus makes healing, mm. okay? But he was willing to allow Jesus to do what Jesus was appointed to do, That's right. all right? And, and he allowed Jesus to pull his eyelids up, all right, and to put that clay that he had made with his spit on his eyes, all right? Not his eyelids, his eyes, okay? He put it in his eyes, 
Okay, so the man could feel what Jesus was doing, mm -hmm. just like we feel what he does sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. but we don't see him. <laughs> All right, but we can feel what he does. That's right. Okay, you felt what he did with you when you got born again. You didn't see him, but many people say, "Oh man, this happened, that happened." All kinds of experiences happen when Jesus puts his hands on you. Okay, something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. Something got a hold of me. Yeah, something got a hold of me. Yeah, it was Jesus. And, and, all right, <laughs> and so this man is trusting what Jesus is doing to his eyes. He's never seen, so he don't see Jesus. He don't see the disciples. All he does is hear somebody talking, and you know, said, "This is what I was sent to do. Let me do this." And so he yields to what Jesus is appointed to. Yeah. This is a lesson for you. Because a lot of people won't yield to Jesus to, for what he's appointed for. They want him to do what they want him appointed for. But he's going to do what he's appointed to do. Mm -hmm. All right? He says, I was sent to do my father's will. That's mm -hmm. an appointment. Okay? And as being having that appointment, he's the only one. He's the only one. And you need to know that. All right? Not some other religion. Not some other way. He's the only one that can make eyes sad to give the blind sight to see. He's the only one. The only way that you and I come out of this dark world is through Jesus giving us eyes set, okay, mm -hmm. to open our eyes up. Now it says, now, you know, one translation, it, it talks about this, this man, you know, he was blind and uh, he represented the whole blind world to the Lord. This is the picture to you and I, how it is when we were blind mm -hmm. and how we open our eyes up, Okay. But we had to do something. It wasn't that he just came and saved you. Again, just as with Jairus and anyone else, this man had to attempt to help him help himself. Jesus told him to go wash in the pool. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't sit there and say, well, I can't find the pool. I'm blind. <laughs> you know? That's good. And he wasn't going to give the same story that the man over in the other pool gave. I don't have no man to lead me to the pool. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> so <laughs> he was blind. But... The man got up and he found the pool. Okay? We don't know how long it took him to find the pool, but he found the pool. Okay? Now, from the Old Testament scriptures, and, and I shared this with you guys yesterday in the service, is that in the Old Testament, Jesus followed them. They drank of the water, the rock that followed them. Okay? Jesus followed them. All right? Follow, why, do you, why do you follow somebody? To see if they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus gave this man leeway to go to the pool and wash. Okay? Because he's going to always follow the Old Testament ways and nature right. that, that has been laid before him. So he did not inject himself in the man getting to the pool. He told the man, you go to the pool. Yeah. Once the man did his duty, then the event was Jesus' event. All right? The water that flowed into that pool actually came out of the mountain. They called it Mount Zion at the time. Mm -hmm. And it filled that pool. This is the same water that the Jews used to get a vessel and dip in and walk up the altar and sprinkle it all up the altar and, and make joyful noises because they knew that that living water was poured out before mm -hmm. God as a, as, a, as a sacrifice. And they were expecting great things to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, when Jesus sent this man to the pool, all right, and you'll notice that the interpretation or the or the meaning of that, of that word, set, see, Loan, all right, that that particular word is interpreted as sent. Jesus is the sent one. He's the sent one. The sent one. He's, He's the sent one. one. You need to say that. He's the sent, sent one. one, okay? Jesus the sent one. The, sent the Father one. sent him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's the sent one, okay? And as the sent one, all right, would you get a picture here? Is that when Jesus told this man to go to the pool, he sent him to himself. That's right. I'm sure he sent him to himself to do what? If any man thirst and hunger for righteousness. See, if any man thirst and hunger for righteousness. All right. That man was thirsty for sight. Which was righteous in God's eyesight because God made us with sight. So it was only the interlopers that came in with sin that caused all of these particular things to happen in our bodies. All this age, all this, you know, all of these other things and that follow us or come for us and or try to attract us to them, to try to make our bodies to become a burden to our brains, mm -hmm. to our minds. Mm -hmm. All these things came in with the interlopers that came in with sin. Okay? And so Jesus is showing or demonstrating his power over all of these things. Yes. But he must have your 
attempt to help yourself to be involved in this particular thing. You believe in for a car, clean your garage out. You know, get that other junk you want out of your driveway, whatever. Do something, attempt to help yourself. You believe in for a job, don't sit at home, lay on the couch all day. Get up and drive to the place that you believe that you want to work at. Park there. Look at the, the, the employees come in and going into the place. Guess what? You're saying, this is where I want to be. You're attempting to help yourself. But don't just sit at home looking through the newspaper every day, circling something if you're looking for a job that way or online or whatever. You know, do something to help yourself to show the Lord that I'm making an attempt to become what you want me to become. Because again, Jesus did, or the man allowed Jesus to do what Jesus was appointed to do. But now also, guess what? The man is now working or walking in what he was appointed to do. Go to the pool. Okay? He was appointed to do what? Go to the pool. Okay? Just like you were appointed to something, you know, he's saying, if you want this to happen, then you have to follow what you appointed to. Okay? And stop sitting around crying and begging and waiting for a man to put you in the pool. All right? The man ain't going to show up. All right? Because the man has already come. Okay? So, so we look at, <laughs> so we look at that. All right? So, when we look at this particular lesson here, all right, about this particular man, again, all of these are things that are happening at feast time. This wonderful time when Jesus did these miraculous miracles. You know, these things, we call them miracles of great magnitude, okay, mm -hmm. because they astonish people, okay? When you look at uh, Jairus' wife, we read the story of Jairus. How much time I got? Okay, I got a few minutes. When we read the story of Jairus, you know, coming to Jesus, and it says that he fell down at his feet and he, he besought him. He humbled himself before the Lord. You know, he knew who Jesus was. He was one of the leaders of the of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. He had seen Jesus. He had heard Jesus teach or preach in the synagogue. Okay, you don't find where Jesus read a whole lot after his first encounter with his own people in Nazareth. He preached in the synagogues. Mm -hmm. You know, but Jairus had heard Jesus preach. He had heard about the miracles that had happened. He's seen all these particular things go on, you know, in, in, that, in that place where Jesus was always, uh, wherever he was, desert, town, by the seashore, in a synagogue. Devils, get out. He, he'd seen all of this go on, all right? And so he comes to Jesus and asks him about, you know, coming, my, my daughter's at the point of death. He's taken time to come from his house to find Jesus, all right? Because Jesus was just getting there, all right? He wasn't there when Jairus left home. He was just getting there, okay? And now, we we don't think about Jairus' wife, who's at home with the little girl, mm -hmm. all right? Now, my wife's a mother. There are a lot of mothers out there, okay? And you just pick up the picture of what it would be to sit there with your daughter, and she take her last breath. She have her last movement in your arms and her fall out of your arms. She has her last smile or last whatever with you, and you know that she's dead. Mm -hmm. And you're there with her. That's a disappointing time. That's the most devastating uh, event, you know, because I don't believe that children should leave here before their parents. I believe that parents should live a long life, and then the children should follow right behind them, okay? But this woman, she's there. Jairus is not. He's with Jesus. But she is there in that, in that season of great disappointment. This is my daughter. I had her, raised her, fed her, have gone through all of this, and she's died. She's died right here. And Jesus shows up. <laughs> he shows up and says that they ridiculed him because he said the girl is only sleeping. Well, he was only talking from his statue, not human statue. That's he was right. talking from his divine statue. She's not dead. She's sleeping. You know? He came there for the purpose of to wake her up. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't be dead. She had to be asleep. And, and the deal is, when he did that, when he spoke to her, and he told her to arise, again, he appointed the parents, the supervision, something over her. He said, give her something to eat. Give her something to eat. All right? Participation, Jairus had to come. He had to attempt to make sure that his daughter was well. No different with you. you. You're going to have to get up off your blessed assurance. All right? 
You're going to have to stop sitting at home or you're going to stop making all of these excuses. You're going to have to stop, you know, talking about, well, the doctor said this. Uh, we know the doctors know a lot of things about your natural body. God has given them the wisdom to know that. If they didn't know it, there would have been so many people that would have been perished and left here a long time ago that's here today. Okay. We understand the natural. Okay. And the natural comes first, but then comes the supernatural. All right. That, that part comes to fix the natural because the natural was created from the supernatural. The supernatural comes to fix that thing that was in your body, that broken bone that never healed. God can fix that bone. He can, he can shrink that, that tumor, dematerialize it, I like to say, that tumor that's in your brain. He can cause, guess what, that cancer that's in your liver to, to, to dematerialize. He can, he can come in and give you, give you a new liver. The Lord, the Lord God can give you new limbs. You know, just like he gave this man eyes, okay? The, nothing is impossible for him. Nothing. The deal is we have shortened him. We put him down somewhere where we should have him up here. We should pick him up and put him up here where he belongs so that his appointed place can work for us instead of us having him on low stature. Jairus' wife, it says that she was astonished because the Lord reversed that disappointment to joy. He reversed those tears to laughter. He reversed all those mockers mm -hmm. to become those who were amazed. Mm -hmm. All right? And I'm telling you tonight with my wife, Pastor John sitting over there, three of us are here agreeing. And I believe that you will get into this agreement with the word of God. And man shall not live by bread alone. That's by what man can fix up himself, but by every word that proceed about the mouth of God. And the Lord God has called you healed. By his stripes, you were healed. He has called you, appointed you as the healed. Now you have to stand up and attempt in every way to allow everything else around you to know that you are the healed. I am appointed to heal just as well as I am appointed as a son of Almighty God. I am appointed. Now you're saying, well, where's this pain going to go? Well, where did your sin go? When you ask the Lord to forgive you, where did your sin go? It went into him who paid for it. All right? He's able to take it all in. No matter how many people, no matter how much sickness or disease is on this earth, Jesus is able to take it all into himself and to bring that darkness and turn it into light. He's able to take it all into himself. Out of him came everything. He's able to take every bad thing that has ever gone on and to put it in himself and to bring it to something good. I shared with the young people yesterday about in, in the book of Mark, chapter 15. You will read that where, where the soldiers, the garrison, Pilate sent him into the garrison and they took his clothes off of him. Mm -hmm. His robe, his robe with no, you know, didn't have that no seems, seems at all, seems well. all right? They took his clothes off. They, those were his clothes that represented who he was. High priest, mm -hmm. king of kings, mm -hmm. lord of lords. Mm -hmm. They took his clothes off and put Gentile clothes on Jesus mm -hmm. and then beat him, mock him, mocked him, you know, spit on him, hit him with the reed, put a crown of thorns on his head. They did all of that to him dressed up as a Gentile so that you and I now... Mm -hmm. He could take our place. He took our place. And they mocked him. Okay? They mocked him. You know? But their heart wasn't in it. They mocked him. They bowed the knee to Jesus, but their heart wasn't in it. All right? And then they took those clothes off of him and put his clothes back on him and took him to the cross. You got to get that because that was a complete transfer of the life that you and I have now. That he took on for us, he took our crime and gave us his freedom. Took all of our pain, disappointments, all those things, and he gave us himself. All right? And so through that trans, that transformation from, from taking on our crime and, you know, and, and taking it and bearing it as a shame on himself, he has now set you and I free. That no matter what's going on in our life, we have a deliverer. Amen. Name is Jesus. Jesus. That's right. You got it. Oh, I see somebody out there. You got some tears. I see you. 
you got some tears rolling down there because you're getting this. Because that pain has burdened your mind so long. And guess what? You know, my wife years ago, she used to share with me uh, about her aunt. She had an aunt that she heard Old Roberts preaching one morning on the TV. And, and she stretched her hands to the TV and God healed her. He, Old Roberts, Roberts. anybody that's got anything going on with your body, if you want to receive yes. healing, just put your hands on the screen. Yes. She said she put her hands on the screen, and the Holy Spirit knocked her back in the bed. Of course, she didn't know. Yes, yeah, she didn't know. She just said something knocked <laughs> no her distance. back in the bed, and she received her No healing. distance in the spirit realm. Knocked her back. She put her hands on the screen, and, and the power of God her. came because she believed what she, she heard. Was, she believed And she, she received heard. her healing. In other words, what he told her to do, he did what he was appointed to do. And guess she what? Did she did what she was appointed to do. Put your hands on the screen. I'm telling you tonight. Put your hands on the screen. Put your hands on that on that smartphone. Put your hands on that screen right now while we're, while we're bringing you this truth of God's word. Put your hand there and receive your healing tonight. Again, this is this is very, it's not complicated. And, and we, religion will complicate God to the point that you won't even understand him because religion comes to blind you. Okay, but this is a time I'm telling you, especially in these days, this is the time for Jesus to do what he what he always wanted to do. He's crying out to you tonight, just like he cried out to all of these people, because guess what? He may not cry out to you anymore. You may not get another chance. You can trust in your own self and you may guess what? Cause your own demise from this world. This is the time for you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, I'm done for the night. I, I can't go any further because if I do, I'm going to get into this conversation with this blind man and the Pharisees, you know, and that's another whole lesson. But I, I want you to really see how God removes the burden from your mind by removing the illness, bringing wellness. This man was born blind. Can you imagine growing up, never seeing his friends, never seeing anybody? Hearing people were never involved in anything because he couldn't know what to do, how to walk. And all of a sudden, Jesus brings a whole new life to him. That's the way it was when you and I were walking in the world. We were blind. We didn't know. We didn't see things coming. But once Jesus opened up our eyes, he put his eye salve on us. He's the only one appointed to do it. That's why he's the only way. There ain't no other way. He's the only way. He put his eye salve on us, and it opened up our blinded eyes. And you will notice that in verse 8, 9, verse 7, it says, when that man washed, he came away seeing. You and I came away seeing. Any believer out there know, know what I'm talking about. When you got born again, the way you saw people changed. The way everything, everything is different. Everything is different, okay? And this is why you and I have to tell people that Jesus is the only way. Yes. Now, we're talking about healing right now, and that's a great thing, but... We need to also tell people about the same situation here brings forth the idea to us, the picture of how salvation works, how he takes the blind and he opens up our eyes so that they come away seeing. Amen. That's what we need in these days, to come away seeing. See. Amen? Amen. See. God bless you guys. Again, I'm done. That's my second closing, all right? <laughs> He's sitting beside right. the professional closing. Okay? <laughs> so you go right on, dog. You want to close out with no, us tonight? No, I said you, you're sitting beside the professional closing. Sitting beside the professional closer. Yeah. All right. Just like I'm sitting here, I've enjoyed that word. I, I was listening to what he was saying in the beginning about the angels ascending Amen. and descending. And I heard him say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every, every word that word. proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when you think about Hallelujah. it, just add something to it. Angels um, hearken yep. to the voice of the word of God. Yep. And so the angels are ascending and descending according to the words that I speak. So Amen. we must speak right words. We must say what God is yep. already saying about us. Because they are ascending and descending, descending according to the words that you are speaking out there. And if you're speaking that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, I call myself healed, yep. I see myself healed. I am yep. healed by the stripes of Jesus. Keep on speaking, just like he said, wrestle with that's your right. healing. Wrestle with your deliverance, whatever your it new, is your new that day. you need. That's yeah, exactly you're wrestling right. with your new day. See, when you're wrestling with sickness and disease or whatever it is, this is a day. This is it's still an old day. But I'm wrestling with that thing for my new day. Okay? And so it's important. Jacob wrestled with the, with the angel of God's presence for the new day. 
okay? Because he had to face his fears. His fears were Esau, okay? <laughs> so he had to face his fear, but he had to wrestle for his new day. And once he wrestled, all right, he secured his new day, okay? He secured the favor he needed, all the graces that he needed. He secured everything that he needed for his new life. It began yeah. with a new day, okay? And so let's wrestle with the things of God for ourselves so that we might, and our children, and our families, and our relatives, and our businesses, and our churches, and our governments, and our nations, may, all of us may walk in a new day. Amen. God it's, bless okay, you. it's okay to wrestle. Yes. For we wrestle That's not right. against flesh and blood, yes. but against principalities yes. and all those things yep. in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. In case somebody said wrestle, yeah, yeah you wrestle. It's a yeah. wrestling match, huh? Yep. But what I'm glad about is when we look at the back of the book, we, we see win. we win. <laughs> we are winners and victorious in Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, well, until next week, well, again, until this night. Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night, please join us, all right, and uh, at our ministry and, at, and online here uh, on, you know, the live stream, uh, please join us and uh, pass the word on, you know, share with all those friends that you got, because there are a lot of people that are burdened down with their bodies these days. Their minds can't think about God because they're locked so up and wrapped stuff. up in pain and stuff all day long. And, you know, all those prescriptions and, you know, pills and potions and all that stuff people are taking us, you know. And so this is to bring a refreshing to you because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, this makes <laughs> you just want to keep going on because I'm listening to what you're saying. And man shall not live by bread alone. Isaiah 26, 3. He'll yeah. keep you in perfect peace. That's right. Because your mind and your thoughts, your inclinations are stayed on him. Right. So keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Amen. And you will be all right. All right. Amen. Well, until next time, next word, same Holy Spirit. <laughs> God bless you. We thank you for the fresh revelation that you received tonight. Amen. Apply it to your life. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.